Hi everyone, Sin from Creative Synchronicity here, and I wanted to share with you a Valentine craft idea. Um, this is for another week of Crafty Hangouts with some of your favorite crafters doing all kinds of Valentine's projects using our sponsor, American Crafts Products. And I gotta say, I absolutely love the things that they sent to me. So what I'm making this time is I'm making what's called a Victorian puzzle purse. These originated back in the 1700s, and it was a um, a very common way of giving a Valentine out. And I like that, you know, I kind of discovered this because it, for me, I mean, it may have been common back then, but it's a pretty unique idea and really a lot of fun. So here's what I'm, I, what it looks like when it's all put together. Now I haven't labeled it or anything yet, but, um, it's all using American Crafts products. So these are some different papers that I layered up from what they gave me. And I've attached it with one of their little embellishments, which is the little mini clothespin. So let me take that off so that you can see some more of it. Um, I love this beautiful ribbon. It's grow grain and then has this stitching going through it. Absolutely fabulous. Can't wait to get my hands on some more of that. So I'm going to open that up. Now this serves kind of as a Valentine card and almost like a, a little gift packet as well, um, which is one of the reasons why I added the ribbon to it, kind of to give it that sort of gift feel about it as well. So I've added some of their little candy dots and you might not be able to see it on here, but um, the candy dots are sitting on top of some of their little sequins just to give it a little extra punch and then some of the buttons that came in their embellishments as well. Then on the back side again I've just cut out some heart shapes from some of their papers. Don't you just love this one? It's a sparkle like a glitter paper but it's corrugated as well. Fantastic. And then um, in the same little jar that came the sequins mixed in were a few little rhinestones and then in one of the other jars they had these little um, pre-made ribbon bows. So just added that for a little bit of enhancement. Now the idea behind the puzzle purse is that they would write a poem, either a poem that they wrote themselves or a poem from somebody else, or you could write a message, like a little letter to somebody or something like that, and they'd write it kind of all around the edges here. And then the idea was it was long enough that as you got inside the puzzle purse, you were revealing more layers and more lines of the poem at the same time. So some of some people like to number it, you know, so that people know what order to read the lines in. Other people, that was kind of part of the fun of the puzzle, is that you just kind of leave it unnumbered and let people kind of weave their way through um, whatever way they want to. So this all is kind of folded into itself. And so when it pops open, first layer kind of looks like a pinwheel here. So you've got this folded um, square in the center and then these little pinwheel bits. And again, if you were continuing with a message or you were writing a poem or something, you could write it around the edges here. You could write it on this center section here or even a whole... Um, paragraph of verse right across there and you can also add more embellishments in here if you wanted to really dress it up. Then as it starts unfolding you get right inside and this was a full 12 inch piece of scrapbooking paper that I used for this. Um, so what you need to know is you need a square of paper but then whatever size your square is, your final folded project is going to be one third of that size, okay? So this is 12 inches when it's fully opened, but when it's folded up, it goes back, it's um, four inches back in that folded shape. So open it up. And what's really lovely here is, you know, either if you're giving a present, um, you know, giving this to, your, to the kid's grandparents or to someone you love, you could put a beautiful photograph in there and it's a nice way of presenting the photograph put it photo corners or something like that and they can remove the photograph afterwards and then frame it or something. And also you can continue on again with the rest of your message. So this all just folds back up again. It kind of collapses on itself. See that? It kind of collapses on itself and then goes right back together. And I'll, I'll show you in a little more detail how that happens in just one second, but just folds right back up into that four inch square again. So it's a great little 
great little way of presenting a, a gift to somebody. Besides the photograph, <clears throat> you could put like a, a little flat packet of some fancy soaps or um, some chocolates, you know, little flat chocolate bars, the little mini ones could go in here. You could put jewelry in this, you could put bath salt, anything that's relatively flat. I mean, you have a little bit of room to play with, um, but you know, you're not gonna be able to put anything too bulky or it's not gonna fold up nicely. And you can see the ribbon that I put on there was purely for decoration. It holds together you know, just fine on its own from the folds that are there. The other thing I want to point out <clears throat> is that you can probably see along some of these edges, they look a little bit ragged. Um, that's because I used the American Crafts paper, which is really thick and very good quality. So when you try to do a lot of folds to it like this, you end up seeing some of the fibers from the paper. I don't mind that at all. To me, that gives it a nice shabby chic appearance. If you use thinner paper, it's really hard to put many embellishments on it, and the repeated unfolding and folding can kind of weaken some of those those seams and it, it just might not hold up very well and it kind of limits you on what you can do with it. So I don't mind that it has that. I think it adds to it. You could take a dampened tea bag and you could certainly stain your paper, tea stain it to make it look even more aged. You could add in maybe a little bit of vintage lace that you've got or something like that and really kind of play up that whole shabby chic appearance anyway. So I'm going to put my camera down. So it's probably going to go black for a second because I, I'm going to try really hard not to make it all bumpy and jumpy and make you get all dizzy from watching me. And then I'm going to show you my work surface so I can show you how to do the folds for this. Okay, so. Oh, that's not too bad. Let me just try to get it so that... Okay, so you can pretty much see my work surface. Now, I'm just using a cheap piece of <clears throat> um, scrap paper. Whoopsie. Sorry about that. My camera is trying to topple over for some reason. There we go. Okay, sorry. All right, <clears throat> I'm using a cheap piece of um, paper simply because the American Crafts paper that I have is... Um, it's all one color on both sides, and I think you'll be able to see what I'm doing here better if I have a different color on each side. So this is just some scrap paper. First fold you're gonna make is a diagonal fold, and I already had one here simply because I was trying to get the, the paper perfectly square, and that's a really good way of doing it. So diagonal fold, open it up, diagonal fold the other direction. Now, you might want to have a bone folder on hand. I'm just going to use my fingernail for now. But to make these really good crisp um, folds, make nice good creases, you might want to have a bone folder on hand to be able to do this. Um, as far as other supplies, you might want a pair of scissors simply for cutting things like ribbon and cutting out shapes out of the, the paper for embellishments and stuff. You don't need any scissors for your square of paper. It's all done with folds. Glue is great to have on hand. Let me just grab, I want to show you the glue that I used. <clears throat> because this gets a lot of handling, when I first made this, I used a pretty cheap glue, just like one of the kids' school glues, right? And these little pieces, every time I kept opening and closing it, they just kept falling off. So what I found works really, really well is this Aliens Max Tacky Adhesive. It is holding up beautifully. I've opened and closed that thing so many times and nothing is budging now with this adhesive. So there's a good recommendation for you as far as a, a glue that you can use to go along with your project. All right, so now you're gonna do some folds in thirds. So another item you might wanna have on hand is a ruler and a pencil so that you can get really precise thirds across your paper. I'm just going to eyeball it for now rather than take the time to have you sit here and watch me measuring it out. But, you know, to get the best results, you're going to want to use that ruler. Okay, open it up. Fold it the other way. Open it up. Now you're going to want to do the same thing going the other direction. <clears throat> so, go that way. Open it up. 
Okay, and what you should have, I'm going to show you on the colored side because I think it's easier to see, is you should have nine squares here, and then you should have an X going through the center, okay? So once you finish those folds on the one side, so I had white side up for making all those folds, you flip it over to the other side, and this is why I'm using this paper that looks different on each side so that you can be sure to uh, see exactly what I'm doing. This time you're going to make another diagonal fold on each of the four corners, but you're not going all the way across. So, you know, normally you'd go all the way across to that opposite corner. This time instead, you're going to the furthest corner of the center square. So take this corner and go up to the furthest corner of the center square. Okay? Turn it around. Do the same thing on the next corner. Take the corner up to the furthest corner on the center square. Unfold that. Same thing on the next one. Corner to the furthest corner on the center square. Open it up. Last corner. Corner to the furthest corner of the center square. <clears throat> so now what you should have is you've got those eight, those, sorry, nine squares on your page. The center one should have an X going through it. The one just above it should have an X going through it. The one just below it should have an X going through it. The one to the right of it, X going through. The one to the left of the center square should have an X going through. Your four corner squares should not have an X it should just have one diagonal line going through it. Okay, so I like to flip it back over to the other side. And then what I do to start collapsing it on itself to make the final square is I pinch one corner between my thumb and finger and I pinch the other corner. And then I just start bringing those corners in. And I will tell you, I mean, it's not as easy to do on this thin paper as it is on thicker, but you just kind of start playing with it. And what you have to do sometimes is, you know, especially with this thin paper, go in here and it's starting to try and buckle a bit. So you just need to go in and kind of play with those shapes. And then you'll see that as you start letting it follow the folds that you've made, you should end up with this pinwheel shape. Okay, so it's just a matter of just kind of easing it in. Don't don't try to rush it. And wherever you need to, just poke your finger in and make sure that those little hills and valleys of your folds are starting to fold up nicely the way they should be. And it will end up collapsing on itself like this. Um, as I said, it's easier to do with the thicker paper. Now what I like to do is I go with my right hand flap. So I have it facing me with you know, flaps going out from the square, and I fold in my right hand flap. Give that a good crease. Then I'm going to go clockwise around, so I'm going to the bottom flap next, fold that flap up. Then I'm going to the left hand flap, and I'm folding that flap in, and then finally I'm coming to this last flap, and it's going to get tucked under okay and that will form your little thing so let me pull back on this one because I think you can see those a little bit easier there so let me do that again for you flap to the right bottom flap left hand flap and then the top flap tucks in gently and it all snaps into place and holds together. So there you go. That's it. It makes a really cute little Valentine to give to somebody. Great way of presenting a little gift to them that's a little bit different than your typical one. And I will be sure on my blog, creativesynchronicity.com, when I put up the link to this post, um, to this video, I will also show you some 
still pictures. So you've got those to refer to along with the video. And I'll also show you some more detailed pictures of the great American Crafts products that we had to choose from, um, all the different embellishments that were in the kits and the different kinds of papers that were there too. Thanks so much for joining me. See you again next time.